The injuries of nationals have been quite pronounced throughout history, most particularly in the 20th century when totalitarian leaders such as Adolf Hitler and Mao Zedong held rule over Germany and China respectively. Both Primo Levi and Bei Dao have had experience with nationalism's dangers, as the former figure was interned in Auschwitz during World War II, while the latter was exiled and imprisoned on account of his criticism of the state. Both of these figures' first-hand experience with the victimhood for not associating with the state tells us a great deal about all the dangers nationalism entails. I'll examine these dangers and show through both Dow and Levi's respective works that they are not so far removed from our own time as we perceive them to be. Primo Levi was born in Turin, Italy in 1919 to a family of Jewish descent. He became aware of his Jewish ethnicity around the age of 19 when fascist dictator Benito Mussolini perpetrated racial laws primarily against the Italian Jewish population. Levi staunchly opposed the growing influence of fascism both in his native country and beyond. This, along with his Jewish ethnicity, culminated in his arrest by fascist Italian forces in 1943. After being temporarily interned in an Italian transit camp, Levi was transferred to the infamous Auschwitz concentration camp. As a result of his skills in chemistry, Levi was exempt from the gas chambers and was instead forced to work in a Nazi laboratory. He was one of the 24 people to survive out of the 650 brought from the railroad convoy. Themes of guilt for being one of the few exempt from the horrific executions of the Holocaust are prevalent throughout his writings. After being liberated by the Soviets in 1945, Levi returned to work in Turin as a chemist before devoting his full attention to writing in 1977. Most of his writings are devoted to themes revolving around his experience in Auschwitz or of fascism. Levi's work The Two Flags details the life of a young man growing up in a fascist state called Latanya. This young man, Bertrando, has been taught since his youth to despise Latanya's rivaling nation of Gunduria. This hate leads Bertrando to be repulsed even by the most neutral stimuli, such as apricots, solely for the reason that these said stimuli contain the colors of the Gunduian flag. Bertrando's hatred ultimately culminates in his collapse at the end of the story, where it can also be presumed of highly reasonable evidence that he possibly died. Interesting to note as well is that Levi describes Bertrando as being rather modest and kind removed from his learned hatred. Levi states on this, Bertrando was a sensitive and emotional youth, and the sight of the enemy flag reproduced for derision on wall posters or satirical vignettes put him in a bad mood and gave him an itch at the nape of the neck and elbows, intense salvation, and a certain dizziness. This tragic flaw of Bertrando's ultimately comes to show the drastic effects nationalism can have on a person who is prone to the ideology's influence. Beyond just the tactic aspects of the mental response, it seems Bertrando is also literally affected physically by his hatred of Gunduia, as all sorts of bizarre annoyances begin to occur around his body whenever he is provoked by anything related to the country. Thus, nationalism, as shown through Levi's text, rids a person of his or her autonomy over the self, instead leads them to blindly follow and propagate the agenda of the state. The context of Levi's own personal experience in a fascist concentration camp makes this account all the more palpable to the general reader. It is only through reflection of these horrific states that we come to any knowledge of how to prevent them from reoccurring, whereas it happened once, it could just as easily happen again. In his poem Old Snow, Beidou touches on many of the same themes Levi touched on regarding nationalism albeit from a significantly different perspective. Dao was born in 1949 in Beijing to a father who worked as a government bureaucrat and a mother who worked as a medical doctor. He was a part of the infamous Cultural Revolution in China instigated by later communist and totalitarian leader Mao Zedong, but soon became disillusioned with the political movement. As a result of his disillusionment, Dao was exiled to the Chinese countryside. During the ongoing years, Dao wrote poetry mainly aimed against the influence and unchecked power of the Maoist regime, in addition to this, he joined political movements that revolted against communist China under Mao. This ultimately culminated in his being exiled officially from his country in 1989. Much of his poetry during this time centered on his status as an exile abroad, while also focusing again on issues related to the growing instability of his home country. Dao attempted to immigrate back into China in 1994, only to be detained in Beijing and later deported. He finally was allowed to return to his fatherland in 2006, settling in Hong Kong with his family where he still resides to this day. Dao's poem, Old Snow, details his own political and artistic imprisonment during his exile from China. The poem's use of symbolism evidences a great concern over Maoist China's creative stagnancy, referring to the country's lack of progress as being akin to old snow. Dao himself resumes a rather despondent tone throughout his poem, hinting at the potential dehumanizing and hope-depleting aspects the nationalistic state can entail. Further, there is no catharsis regarding this rule of the state anywhere in his poem. There is essentially never hope. Take Dao's last stanza in the poem as an example of this, where he says, Green frogs start their hibernation. The postman's strike drags on. No news of any kind. 
Fascism is thus shown to be symbolic of a sort of dystopian world where hope is minimal and the individual is robbed of the one thing that makes him or her an individual, his or her creativity. It is thus crucial for Dow that one exercises a healthy dose of skepticism in the face of state propaganda and rule. In end, both of these works express that nationalism, when taken at its worst, can act as the catalyst of some of the more horrific events that occur in history, none being more noteworthy than the Holocaust and the Cultural Revolution in China. It is thus wise in our own time to always stay cautious of how the people that were affected by nationalistic states back then were most likely not too different from people in our own generation. It's just that these past generations of people were victims to the wrong message. The key is awareness, and it is our duty to exercise this power at all times possible.